Today we're going to focus on NURBS, so Non-Union Rational B-Splines. It's a mouthful, it's an interesting acronym, but a powerful way to make sort of more organic flowing forms, a uh, different way of modeling from polygonal based modeling and, and you know one that's been around for quite some time. Works really well for certain situations and often you'll just create something as a NURB and still convert it to a polygonal object to then create uh, and add more detail to it. But I'm going to show you three very common NURBs just to get you started. We're going to look at Revolve or also known as Lathe NURBs. We're going to look at Loft NURBs and we're going to look at Extrude NURBs which are also known as Sweep NURBs in other platforms. And we're also going to talk about how to convert those NURBs to polygons uh, in case that's something that you want to do. Alright, let's start off with a Revolve or a Lathe NURB. So this starts off by uh, bringing up your Curves and Surfaces panel. Um, I'm going to just use the Bezier curve tools today, but you can use any of these curve tools that you like. There's a lot of different ones in here, but let's just start off with the Bezier curve. It's very similar to the pen tool in uh, Photoshop or Illustrator. So I'm going to click down in this front panel. And the reason I'm doing that is because when you're working with a lathe or a revolve nerve, you want to make sure that your curve is aligned to the axis that you want to kind of revolve the object around. So in this case, I'm going to revolve kind of around the um, X axis or the Y axis. I'm sorry, it's going to revolve in the X direction, but around the Y axis. So I'm just going to click and drag. You'll notice it creates a Bezier handle. I click and drag again, another Bezier handle, keep clicking and dragging. I'm going to make kind of a fun flowing kind of vase like form. All right. And I'm going to try to click right on that center axis there. And I'm going to click off of it there and finish the, the curve. I'm not going to close this one. But something that I need to do is I need to make sure that the points at the beginning and end are literally right on the Y axis. And I'll show you why first and then we'll come back and make sure that they're on there because I know they're not on there right now. So if I take this path that I've created, I can click off of it. You'll see over my outliner, it's called Bezier 1. And I just go over here again on the curves and surfaces tab and I click on this one that looks like a little chalice and hit revolve. If I go back here, you'll see it's created this crazy kind of vase mushroom form. Your first question might be, why is it black? Well, depending on the direction of your path, sometimes uh, the normals, they're called normals, which tell uh, Maya what's the inside and outside of your object get reversed. So a very quick way to fix this is just to go up to surfaces and go down to reverse direction. It's the last item in the list. And now you'll see it's gray. So it has the inside out correct again. But I want you to notice how at the very top and bottom, there's actually a hole. There's a hole there and there's a hole there. And the reason why is because that first and last point of the curve were not perfectly on the axis. So when it revolved, it kind of revolved just near it and left a hole in the surface. So I'm going to undo a little bit and show you a much better way to do it so you make sure you end up with a closed object. So I'm going to go back to the front view here and one of the first things you learn when you right click on a curve uh, you don't get your normal menu of like lot edges, points, um, faces. You get control vertexes and control curve points, hulls, uh, eventually you'll see isoparms when we get up to NURBS. So if I click on uh, control vertex. Now I can go and edit those points. So I can click on any of these points anytime I want. And if I took like my move tool, I can actually move these around and I can modify this, which is a, you know, cool way to be able to modify things after you've made them, right? So I can change my angles around and all that fun stuff. But an easy way to dial in to make sure that's right without having to like zoom way in and see, I can click on that first point and I can come over here to my channel box layer editor. And I don't know why this is hidden, but right up here where it says CVs, click to show, up in the top right here on the channel box editor, if I click the text, it doesn't even look like a button, but if you click on CVs, you'll get this little hidden menu. And then under X, I can just type in zero, and it'll be right on the X plane now instead of whatever it was, 0 0.02. Same thing, I'll go to the last point. You see how it's negative 0 0.0128? I'm going to put that to zero. Now they're absolutely on that zero center axis. Now, what's kind of cool, actually let me move this guy around a little bit. Some of these curves are a little bit rough from my liking, there we go. Now when I rotate this guy, let's go back to object mode. 
and I click on rotate, spacebar, there's my orthographic view. Now, again, I'm going to go to surfaces and reverse direction, so it's gray. Now, oh, the top one was right. I must have undone something. Let's do that again. I screwed something up there. Let's take a look at this again one more time. Control vertex, click on the first point there. Huh, well, now I'm at a loss because that should be on zero. That should not have a hole in it. Let's see what's going on here. Definitely. Oh, you know what? I might have dragged it out a little bit. Let's see, maybe it's because it has a. Ah, uh, yeah, there's a, a second vertex there. I'm not sure how that happened. I must have clicked twice. Let's move these over a little bit. I think it's actually the handle. Oh, so what was happening is I was moving the position of the handle, not the vertex. See how that's not at zero? Now we have it at zero. All right, cool. So let's zoom back out. Yeah, so watch those details. All right, object mode. Yeah, that looks good. Let's bring it up so it's at the right angle. I've got it selected. Come back up here and do the revolve. And there's my object. Again, it's black. It's not always going to show up that way. It kind of comes based on the direction of your how those different points were laid out. So I can, but I can always go back up to surfaces and reverse direction. Now you can see no hole, no hole, perfectly solid object. Now, if I go to my attribute editor, I can control some different features. Let me um, show this off a little bit. If I go to revolve one, you'll see first thing is how smooth of an object do I want is based on the number of sections I give it. I can really up this. Um, and, and really smooth it out. Now I could have laid out more points on that original curve as well and that would have made it more smooth sort of on the profile uh, but this will make it smoother as it like you know kind of goes around the object circular wise like that. Um, and then the other thing I can do is I can change right now it's a full 360 degree sweep to create this but you can always ease that back and say like you know I only want to go and create a, a pie wedge out of this or maybe I want to go 180 degrees now it leaves a big open hole on that side, uh, but one way that you can fill that is you can click on your object and you can right click and you can choose isoparm. And this will allow you to kind of choose the edge. So I can get the two halves, I held shift down to select that second half over there. So I got, again, if I click off, I clicked on that edge, right here. And then I held shift and clicked on that one. Now if I go up to surfaces and go to planar, I can fill that you see it created a plane surface. Now again, that's inside out, so I want to go to surfaces and reverse direction, and boom, I've got that filled, which is pretty cool, right? So get a plane kind of gave you a little cap on that. Um, the other option that I could do, I could delete that planar surface. Say I want to convert this to a polygon. I could choose my object, and I could come up to a modify, convert, and NURBS to polygons. Now I want to bring up this little window because one thing you want to do is you don't want to convert it as triangles. You want it to convert it to quads. Uh, it's going to help you out down the road when you start to uh, add textures to this object. So I'm going to do quads and I'm going to go ahead and apply. And then you'll see now I have like the original NURB object and then I have this NURB to polygon object. So I can hide the NURB in case I ever need to come back to it. And now here's my polygonal object. And if I want to fill that hole, all I got to do is go up to Edit Mesh, or I'm sorry, Mesh Tools, and Fill Hole. And that filled it off and capped it off, which is really nice. So, kind of a cool feature. Let me turn off the original Bezier, and then I get this cool object, and now I can use Sculpt Tools. I can do all sorts of different stuff on it, and it's a nice polygonal object. So, whether you want to stick with it as a NURB, uh, or if you want to convert it to a polygon, you've got lots of options there. All right, so that's Revolve and Lay NURBs. Let's keep going. I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Next thing I'm going to show you is loft nerves. I always say loft nerves are a lot like kind of like putting a tent up where you put like the poles in the tent and then the loft is like the fabric that's stretched across those poles. So we're going to start off going with my four-way view. Uh, I'm going to go back to the front view again. And I'm going to kind of just make a shape. Again, I'm going to use the Bezier curve tool. I'm going to draw out kind of a funky shape. You can also draw these shapes in Illustrator 
and then copy and paste them in using this SVG button. So if you like copy a shape in Illustrator and then come into, into Maya and click this SVG button, it'll actually paste it in as an object, which is pretty cool. Um, something down the road we'll look at in a future lesson. But we'll go back to curves. Let me keep drawing this guy out. Now, one of the frustrating things in Maya is uh, you can't just like click on the last point like you can in Illustrator to close it. Like if I click that, it won't actually close it. I can get close, uh, but the only way to close a curve is this funky little way. If I click uh, off the object just to finish it, finish the curve, and I hold down Shift and then right click on it, there's an option to open or close it. And it always does it in like a really awkward way. It's, it's, it's I don't know why Maya does it this way, uh, but you can fix it. So if I go to Control Vertex, uh, I can come in here and get on my move tool, click on this guy, and and bring this in. I mean, maybe I still want to kind of, um, yeah, I'll bring that in. I believe I click on that guy. Um, I can at least bring this point down a little bit. There we go. I'll bring this curve back out where it was before. Okay, cool. So it allows me to close it off and then right click again into object mode. Now I have a closed shape, right, that I can work with. So I'm going to go back to the four way view. Uh, from above, I'm going to duplicate this a few times. So I'm going to do Command or Control D if you're on a PC. Um, move these. Oh, I guess I didn't do it. Command D. There we go. Uh, I'm going to scale this one down a little bit. And Command D again and scale it um, back up. A little bit, and then Command D again, and one more time, move it over, and scale it back down. All right, now I'm going to select them in an order. It's really important that you go from like one end to the other. You don't want to jump around. You don't want to go from here. Uh, I'm going to hold down Command to select multiples, or Command and Shift. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, actually I was wrong on the command, it's just shift, so I'm going to hold down shift, but I want to do them in order, so like one, two, three, and four, or opposite, go one, two, three, and four, and once you have them uh, selected in that order, then all I do is come up here to this one that looks like a little wave, the loft um, connector, and you can see it connects the four of those. Now that one's inside out again, so I have to go to surfaces and reverse direction. And there we go, I have a form, very organic form that's kind of stretched across those. And again, if I want, I can go to my object, I can go to uh, isoparms and I can click on this one on the front and do surfaces planar, go to the back side, surfaces planar, and cap those off. Or I can convert it to the polygon again if I go up to modify and convert to polygon and then fill hole. So you've always got those options of what you can do. Uh, loft, I actually do use lofts quite often for making really different kinds of organic forms. It's, it's a really great way of building and often I'll still convert it to a polygon, um, but a really nice way to work, right? All right, last one I want to show you is the extrude NURB, also known as a sweep NURB in um, some other platforms out there. So, so this time, this one's a little particular, so I'm going to go to the top view. So it's kind of like laying, making a pipe or a snake-like form. I'm going to use the bezier again. And I'm going to just kind of create a little snaking path, right? So I'll kind of flow this guy. Don't go too crazy with it, like really tight curves, but there we go. All right, and then I'm going to click on my main select tool to kind of click out of it. There we go. And now I'm going to add just one of these pre-made circles. You don't have to use a circle. You can use any shape that you want, but it does have to be a closed shape. So I'm going to add a circle. And I'm going to make sure that this circle is kind of put at the beginning or the end of this object, right? So I'm going to put it here at the, at the beginning. I'm just going to scale it up just a little bit. And just make sure. I like to, if I can, I like to actually like get the center of it literally right over the beginning of that point, okay? Now, I'm going to go here, and I'm gonna go ahead and select that circle again, 
And now I'm going to rotate it into the position that I want. Like I want it to be rotated just how it's going to flow around the object. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. You could actually dial this in in the channel box if you want to. So on rotation on the Z, I could just type in negative 90. Or I could put in just 90 if I don't want to go negative. 90 is fine. And then I even want to just kind of like rotate it into place a little bit. See how it's kind of like from above if I look at it. You know, I want it to flow along here. So I'm going to rotate it one more time just so it's literally like following the path, just like it's going to start and it's going to kind of extrude along that form, right? Now that I have those in place, I can select the circle and then select the path. I'm holding down shift to select them both. And then I'm going to come up here. It's the kind of like circular tube-like form. That's the extrude nerve. And I'm going to click it. And there we go. That easily I've created kind of a tube-like, uh, tentacle-like path, which is really great. It's inside out again, so I'm going to go to surfaces. I still don't know why Maya does that. I'm going to work on that. That uh, might be the way I'm laying down my Beziers, but I'm going to reverse direction and make that gray. Easy fix. Now there's some fun attributes on this. So again, I can go to extrude. Um, I can scale this, which is kind of fun. So I can like make that one end go down to a point. A lot of people use these for like vine or tree branches, which is pretty cool. Um, I like to add the slightest bit of rotation too. It just helps to like smooth out. It adds some subdivision to it, and it tend, But if you go too crazy with it, you'll see it like really warps it. So just watch how much you how much rotation you add. You don't need to like go all the way up to 360. But just the slight look how chunky it looks, and then boom, a few degrees, and it's this like nice smoothed out form, right? Um, now if you look closely, you'll see the ends are not capped. Even the tip there is not capped. So again, if I want to have these capped. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to, um, oh, actually, I have to click off of it, actually select it, and then choose isoparm, choose the ring, surfaces planar, right? Um, and then the other thing that you can do, uh, I think I forgot to mention, but on the extrude nerve, uh, you can also do fixed path. Fixed path will make it follow the original path. So like if I choose on that original Bezier, see how it's like a little bit off from the path right now? Well, if you click Fix Path, it just makes it really follow that path. So I often turn that on if it's important that it follows the original path. If it's not important, you don't have to toggle that. But I like people to know that that's an option if you really need the sweep or the extrude nerve to kind of follow along that path. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get rid of the little planar cap and just review one more time how to convert this to a polygon. So if we go to mod uh, modify and then down to convert and nerves to polygons, click the little toggle box, make sure you have quads selected and then go ahead and apply it. And uh, close. And uh, I can always go in here and then hide all of my original nerve stuff. So I'm going to hit H on each of these and be left with just that object, which is cool. And now for the holes, all I would need to do is go to mesh and fill hole and it caps it off nicely. So now I have a nice polygonal object that I could extrude and modify and use sculpt tools and everything I want in between. Um, if I go back to, because I came out looking a little bit chunky, um, I'm going to undo here until we get rid of that. I can always select this object and again if I go back to um, modify and convert, nerves to polygons. can usually, I'm just trying to remember, when you go to quads here, increase the overall accuracy. I thought there was a control here. There used to be a control that allowed me to control the accuracy of that, the chord height. I'll increase the fractional tolerance here. Let's see if we can get this, just bring these numbers up. That's a little bit better. Um, just trying to get a little bit better of a kind of a conversion to happen here. Let's increase these guys a little bit more. Oh, that brought it up quite a bit. So that's a much smoother. I think I might have gone a little overboard on that one. So again, you just kind of have to play with these settings a little bit on that convert. I might have gone maybe just a little bit too much. So back to modify, convert, nerve to polygon. Bring these up to like that level. 
that's a little bit better. I'm definitely getting like more curvature, but obviously I'm getting a lot of more su a lot more subdivision as well, especially in some of those higher bend points. But I'll get a, a smoother. So you know, do it as far as you need to kind of get the curvature that you need out of it. And then again, I can hide these, and then I'm left with the polygonal object at the end. So lots of ways to get a smoother kind of conversion out of it there in the end. That's it for now. That's a quick introduction. Hopefully that gets you started on Revolve or Lathe NURBS, Loft NURBS, and Extrude or Sweep NURBS, and then how to convert those to a polygon. All right. Thanks for watching.